Pictures of a custom RTX 30 series graphics card appear to have leaked online. Let's take a look. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So I first saw these leaks over at the website videocards.com. If you want to go ahead and see the original article, there will be a link in the description below. And according to video cards, in regards to the pictures that were leaked, quote, the leaker claims that the manufacturer told him it is in fact an RTX 3080. Yet it's hard to imagine that a 3080 would feature this much memory. Now before we take a closer look at this leaked PCB, I just want to mention that while it is likely that this is a third party, uh, I believe they said it was an iGame colorful PCB that was leaked out by an AIB partner, well, there is a chance that it's completely fake, so keep that in mind. But you know, and at the end of the video, I'll discuss whether or not I personally believe this PCB photo is real or not. But, you know, either way, it's fun to discuss these types of leaks, so let's go ahead and do just that. Alright, so here we are looking at one of the leaked photos, and honestly, as you can see, this is just a huge mess. It's going to be hard to talk about, so I decided to try and clean it up a little bit here. Uh, I took several of the other photos and some other photoshopping skills that I have to try and uh, photoshop, and make it look a little bit better, and try and highlight the things I want to talk about here. So... Let's go ahead and enable all the edits I've done. And the first thing I want to talk about here is the fact that we're actually looking at the back side of this GPU. If you look closely here, you can see the PCIe thing here was a little bit uh, obscured by a piece of RAM they set on top of there. And the same goes for uh, the GPU 2, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, that right there was, they had like an Intel CPU on it for some reason. Really bizarre. But, um... I guess that's just how they wanted to cover things up. So, in any case, yes, we're looking at the back of this card here, and what we can tell here is that on this card, there's not only memory on the back, but there's also some sort of GPU, supposedly, that's being covered up. And I'm going to read a little quote from videocards.com about it. Quote, the leaker did say that there's an external chip on the back, but it was not revealed what its purpose. And that's a little bit of bad English there, but clearly they're talking about this section here. And reading through uh, Video Card's article and looking at the images, it looks like this little square here is exactly where the second die is going to be. And speaking of the second die, let's talk about it. So the GPU 2, which I have defined here, and I have tried to kind of cut out what I believe it's going to look like, is most likely going to be a RTX accelerator as well as the thing that handles DLSS. Now, currently on the NVIDIA GPUs, the 2000 series or the 20 series, whichever way you want to say it, uh, those GPUs have this silicon built into them. And I think in order to get a bigger increase in performance, they decided to put it on the back. Now, I'm not sure if this somehow saves them money to do it this way or if it's just way more efficient in terms of performance or power efficiency. That's something I just don't know at this stage, but it seems like what the rumors are right now that the ray tracing performance, and even if you look at NVIDIA's website, is supposed to be significantly higher than it currently is on the 2000 series. So that'll be interesting to see what this GPU turns out like. And what really interests me about this back chip here is that the GPU that we're looking at right now has no back plate or anything on it that's cooling it. And I'm wondering if we're gonna have to have extra cooling on the back here, because not only are there memory modules, which typically it's best practice to cool memory modules, especially if you're like overclocking them or pushing a bunch more voltage into them. But we also have this GPU on the back. And again, I don't see any cooling. so. I'm wondering, are we going to have like three or four slot cards here? Because we're going to have to have cooling on top. You know, it's something we don't know, but it'll be interesting to see if this photo does turn out to be real, if we're going to get a big cooling system on the top as well. Now moving on, let's talk about the memory. And if we look at the memory here, we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 chips. And so typically these come in one gigabyte variants or 8 gigabit and supposedly there's going to be 21 gigabit per second GDDR6 modules that come in 8 gigabit uh, flavors which of course would be 1 gigabyte so that's why I'm assuming that's what it is now is this mirrored on the other side is this 11 gigabytes or 22 gigabytes that's something we don't know right now if this is an RTX 3080 I would assume that it's just the 11 gigabytes and even if it's a 3090 it could still be 11 gigabytes but um, if it's like a 3090 or 3080 Ti, whatever they want to end up calling it, then, well, we'll probably see 
this being mirrored on the other side and get a card with 22 gigabytes, or maybe they'll take one off and have it be 20 gigabytes. That's a huge amount of RAM. And I want to read a little quote from videocards.com again here. And they say, quote, in a technology brief, Micron has confirmed that the GeForce RTX 3090 will sport memory based on GDDR6X technology. They go on to say, quote, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 graphics card is listed on the Micron website with 12 gigabyte GDDR6X memory. Micron estimates that GeForce RTX 3090 will be able to break the one terabyte per second barrier with bandwidth expected between 912 to 1008 gigabytes per second. So that's really interesting because not only does that confirm there is an RTX 3090, but it also confirms that GDDR6X is real. Now, personally, I wasn't 100% ride or die on that GDDR6X leak. I thought it was weird that they were naming it 6X, but clearly they are. Uh, in the past, I thought that they would go for 18 to 20 gigabit per second GDDR6, but it looks like they're actually going all the way to 21 gigabit per second, and they're naming it GDDR6X, which is really interesting. That's going to have some really high speeds and totally makes HBM2E not necessary for these gaming GPUs, which is probably for the best since it'll bring the price of the overall card down. Now, Micron was stating that they thought it was going to be between 912 to 1,008 gigabytes per second. And if this is the 21 gigabit per second GDDR6X that we're looking at here, well, we can do some simple math here, and if there's 11 modules here, we can assume, you know, un unless there's one that's covered up over here, which there definitely could be, we can assume that that means that we're going to get a 352-bit bus. So let's go ahead and do the math here, and let's do 352 times 21,000, and then we take that and we divide it by 8,000, and what that gives you is actually... 924 gigabytes per second. And that would be a huge amount of memory bandwidth, you know, far more than any cards that are out there right now running regular GDDR6. And, you know, if this is a 3080, that's really impressive. Now, they could go with uh, 20 gigabits per second, 18 gigabits per second, etc., and make the bandwidth lower. If it is a 3080, they could definitely do that. But Either way, we can expect to see some really high memory bandwidth. Now, the other thing I want to talk about here is this NVLink connector, and we can see that it's different, and the way we know it's different is because if we compare this to the 20 series cards, uh, the 20 series kind of has one that goes like from here to here and then has another small one there, whereas this one is just two big chunky boys here. So, you know, I don't know if that means we're going to get an increase in bandwidth or what the deal is there but you know at the end of the day SLI is pretty much dead so this isn't really a big deal to me but maybe for people who do like uh, folding at home or something this could make multi GPU more efficient we'll just have to wait and see now another thing I want to talk about is the fact that this card looks like it's gonna have really beefy VRMs you can see here that there's clearly a bunch of components that are supposed to be here on the other side. We, we obviously can't see them from this side, uh, probably on both sides here. And it just looks like the power delivery on this card is going to be really, really impressive. But to be honest with you, this isn't a Founders Edition card. This is supposed to be an iGame Colorful PCB here. And so to me, that really isn't super impressive I, that's something that we do often see from like really high-end third-party cards so it's good to know that they are going to be taking power delivery seriously here at least on the third-party cards and now that brings me to the final thing i want to talk about here and that is that we have three eight pins here and this is significant because not only is that going to provide you with a ton of power but it's also going to allow for maximum compatibility see there's been Rumors going around here that we're going to be getting, I think it was a 12-pin connector, and people were freaking out thinking they're going to need two power supplies or they're going to have to convert two or three 8-pins into a 12-pin to get power to the GPUs. And, you know, I think Gamers Nexus mentioned before that these third-party manufacturers are going to be sticking with the classic 8-pins for sure, and it's good to see that that is the case here. And beyond that, three 8-pins on an 80-class card is going to allow you to put a ton of power in there. So if we actually do the math here again, we can take, I believe, an 8-pin uh, technically can give you 150 watts of power. I'm sure it can give you more, but, you know, yeah, on paper they say 150. So you can take 150 watts times 3, 
which gets you uh, 450 watts of power. And then you take that and then you add 75 watts, which you can get from the PCIe connector. So that actually gets you a total of 525 watts of total board power. So that is a huge amount of board power there. And, you know, honestly, for an 80 class GPU, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't really recall there being 80 class GPUs in the past that have had three 8 pin connectors. You know, maybe there have been some that I just uh, I'm, am not aware of that are super high end. But again, I don't recall there being 80 class GPUs in the past that had three 8 pin connectors. So this could be pointing more towards the fact that we are going to be getting GPUs with a higher TDP. I believe it was um, Igor from Igor's lab who said that his sources were telling him we were going to get like 320 and 350 watt TDP cards. So, you know, looking at this, if this is an 80 class card, that could lend some, lend some credence to the fact that, yes, we are going to be getting cards with higher power limits. So after all that, the question remains, is this leaked PCB image real? And well, you know, we can't tell for sure whether it's real or not, but in my personal opinion, if I was to put a number on it, a percentage, I'd say there's probably about a 70% chance that yes, this is real. I mean, when you take a look at the um, where the power delivery should be and the three eight pins, and just the way the whole card lines up, it does look pretty real to me. Obviously, there are some red flags, like why did the guy set um, an Intel CPU over the back of the thing? I know he was trying to hide it, but then why blur it after that? I don't know. There's some odd things about it. So, yes, it could be fake. But, you know, personally, I believe this is probably real. And we really don't have to wait long until these cards are officially announced on September 1st. So it'll be interesting to see if this PCB does end up being real. And be sure to stay subscribed because when these 3080 and 3090 cards launch, I will be picking up a custom 3080 and doing all sorts of overclocking content with it. So make sure you're around for that. But in any case, that's just what I think about this. Tell me what you think. Do you think that this PCB is real or not? I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below. And of course, I will see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.